Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, I'm going to look at the HDR tools, and I'm going to give you a little introduction into the Resolve color management. So we're not going to go too deep, but we're going to get you started. So let's take a look. So in this episode, I'm going to be looking at the new HDR tools that came with DaVinci Resolve 17, and also the new color space, the DaVinci Wide Gamut. I've had a lot of requests for this episode, so I'm going to be using the scopes to start with. So if you don't understand how to use scopes, I've done a dedicated episode on that. So you need to watch that one first. So in regular primaries, you've got lift, gamma, gain, and an offset. So we've got four controls, if you like. So this one is doing darker regions, midtones, and highlights. And this one is doing overall image. Now, if we move on to the HDR tools, you've got a similar looking layout, but you've actually got more zones. So we've got black, dark, and shadow. And then if I press this top one here, we can see the next three. Light, highlight, and specular highlight. So we're covering a much more defined range. And then you've obviously got a global offset as well. Okay, so we can go between these by just pressing down in a singularly. So we're just moving up through the range. Or if you press the bottom one, you get the bottom three, and the top one, you get the top three. So that's how you navigate around these things. You can only have four of these wheels open at a time. You can take the global off here so that it's not there permanently. And to do that, you need to go into the zone tool, which is up here. So this tool works in conjunction with these. So this is basically, this is your control, and this is defining where these different zones are operating. So let me show you. Oh, to show you how to get rid of the global, by the way, if you click on the menu here, you can say bank global with color wheel. If I take that off, you see now we've got shadow, light, highlight, and specular highlights. So you can see, you see more zones at a time. Personally, I prefer to have the global on there all the time. So each of these zones is represented on this graph. So if we want to see where shadow is, for example, if I just click it, there's shadow. And shadow covers all this region. The arrow is facing down. So it goes from this line all the way down here. So shadow includes dark and black. If I click on dark, you see that's within the shadow range. And black is also within the shadow range. So dark contains dark and black. Shadow contains shadow, dark, and black. So all three zones. Now light and shadow actually cross over. So shadow covers all this region and light actually starts within the shadow region, but the arrow is facing up. So it covers all this region up here. Highlight sits within light and specular is right at the top. There is overlap on these and that helps create a much more pleasing image. So I could reduce exposure in light and then put exposure back in, in just the highlights. So we really start controlling. I'm gonna show you that in a, a real example. Now you'll also notice down here our range. So we've got minus eight stops and plus eight stops and zero here. So zero, this is your 18% mid gray line. Then we've got eight stops of exposure down and eight stops of exposure up. Now our graph at the minute, our grayscale, is stopping here at exactly 100 nits. And that's because we're currently in Rec 709. We're not in HDR space. So Rec 709 is only capable of going up to this 100 nit line. So if we want to change that, if we go to our project settings, and we're currently in DaVinci YGB Color Manage, but we're in SDR Rec 709. So we're in Standard Dynamic Range 709. Now, if I change that to be a wider color gamut, we can go here to our DaVinci Wide Gamut. Okay, a quick tip here, by the way. If you're playing with these settings, every time you press Save, it closes down. So what you can do is you can change a setting and if you press your Alt Option key and press Save, it makes the change but keeps the box open. So it means you can go through the different settings and find the one that works for you. So I'm gonna switch that back to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Our output color space is still going to be Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. I'm gonna save that. And you see what happens now is we now have the grayscale covering our entire range of stops. So we've now got 16 stops that we're covering here. This now means our specular highlights is included, whereas in Rec. 709, Specular Highlights was outside of that region. Let me just show you. If I go back to Rec. 709, click on there, you see 100 nits stops here, and Specular Highlights here is outside of the zone. So if I just Specular Highlights, nothing happens because it's outside of the zone. So let's go back to our DaVinci Wide Gamut. And what this is doing is giving you a much larger color space. In fact, you can read it here, an extra wide gamut log grain environment suitable for SDR and HDR deliverables. So you don't have to be outputting HDR to use a wider color space. Just gives us much more use of these 
high dynamic range tools because we can use these tools in standard dynamic range as well. So for regular SDR grading, you can use the high dynamic range tools. So you've also got these tools down here, which are similar to the ones that are in the primary tools, but they do behave slightly different in HDR mode. So for example, temperature here, I can control it here, or I can control it on the global wheel here. So if I push towards warm, and then go towards cool, you see that warm has a much heavier bias than cool. So cool is very subtle. It doesn't actually affect it as much as it does in the primary control. But whereas warm is quite obvious. And we've also got this black offset control as well. So if I bring exposure down, you see that you always get this nice roll off in HDR. And the point where it rolls off is controlled by the black offset here. So if I just lift that, We've now, I've now just raised the point where the black rolls off. So you get a really nice roll off in the blacks and the highlights. So let me just reset that. And you'll also see here in the zones that you can switch them on and off as well. So if you don't want specular highlights, for example, you can literally switch that zone off. So you've then only got five zones to deal with. You can see that the number of circles down here has decreased. You can also add your own zones. So you can click in here and create your own zone and give it whatever name you want. And you'll notice here there's this thing called fall off. So let me show you what that's doing. So fall off is defined by this red line. So at the minute we're on dark. So let's move up to shadow. Okay, so on the shadow, obviously shadow, as we know, the arrow goes to the left. So it's going from here. Uh, so just above our 18% line, all the way down to the bottom. To show this, look what I'll do, if I just put some color into shadow, so let's just go here. Let's add some color in there. And we've got a little bit of fall off in here already. Now what this is, what this means is that the blue color that I've just put into shadow goes from the very bottom all the way up to the shadow mark here in the zone. Now I can move these zones. So you've got full control over that. And also what I can do is adjust the fall off. So at the minute we've got our blue coming all the way up through the dark zone, through the black zone, and at this point here, it starts to fall off. We, you can see our red indicator. It starts to fall off just before it hits this point here. Now we can adjust that using this fall off zone here. So the higher I put that up, the sooner in our exposure that that blue I've put into the shadow is gonna start falling off. So it starts falling off here. And by the time it's got to here, it's completely fallen off. So if you want to use the whole zone, you need to take your fall off off. So this is helping us get a more pleasing look because the zones do overlap. So that's what the fall off is doing. So now we've sort of gone through what everything's doing. Let's have a look at it on an actual image. So I'm going to reset this, just do a global reset. And in here, I've got an image. And because we're in a color managed space, this has gone to Rec 709 automatically. So uh, let me show you how that's working. If I go to my clip here, if I right hand click and say input color space, and this only appears when you're in a color managed workflow. If you're in non color managed, you don't get input color space. And you see there we've got black magic design. So DaVinci Resolve knows that it's a black magic clip and it puts it into the Rec 709 color space, which is what we've got set for our output. The DaVinci wide gamut and the new HDR tools have much better tone mapping than in version 16. So you don't have to worry about it so much now. You do still have control over it, but by default, it's working really well. So just to show you, if I came out of that and went into non-color managed and press save, you've got your regular log looking um, Blackmagic RAW file. Whereas if we go to color managed, it automatically puts it into 709 color space for us. So let's go to a wide gamut and say save. And you see now we've got our nice exposure down here. It's got plenty of dynamic range to play with. And just to show you again, if I put that back into regular, it cuts off at 100 nits. So that hopefully explains what the DaVinci wide color gamut is about. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is check my zones where they're sitting in this image. So in order to do that, if you just click next to each zone, you can highlight what's being covered. So let's go down to our blacks and you see the blacks is not actually even covering anything. Now what I wanna do is be able to move the zone map at the same time as seeing what's being covered. So to do that, if I put my highlight on up here, then you can actually grab your zone map and move the tool. So I'm moving the blacks now. Let's adjust the darks and the shadows. I'm just gonna check that's not covering any sky. 
like so. And I, I can adjust the fall off here so you can see that happening on the image. So it's a really good way of setting up your zones. So usually the dark and the specular are not included. So yes, yeah, so the specular is only just covering her watch there, but I want to get a little bit of cloud in there, just a little bit. And that's our highlight. So once you're happy, I can then take off the highlights and you can adjust the zones after as well. What I often do is do a little bit of grading and then go and adjust my zone after as well. So let's bring down our global exposure. Again, we're never going to get below that certain point because we get that really nice roll off, which is controlled by the black offset. Let's bring our exposure down a little bit. And I'm going to work on the black, dark and shadows first. So let's bring our blacks right down there and take out some saturation. Let's check our darks, uh, shadows. I don't want to lose any detail in our hair. So I'm going to bring that up there. I'm just going to put a little bit of coolness into the darks. Okay, great. Now let's have a look at the highlights. So again, clicking here brings you the three highlight areas. You've got light, highlights, and specular. So if I bring down light, And then I can boost highlight, which will give us a bit more contrast in those clouds because I've brought the overall level down. Remember, light covers all these three. And then highlight will punch a little bit of light back into the clouds. So there we go. Let's just warm that up a little bit. Okay, and I just want to show you what's happening with contrast. So this is just slightly exaggerated, but just to show you, if I increase or decrease contrast, you see that you get a very different look than you do if you did that in primary controls. And that's because saturation remains constant when you're using contrast in the HDR tool over the primary tool. So let me reset that. And if I show you that in the primary control, you see that you get more saturation as you increase contrast. So it's a very different look. So remember, you can use the HDR tools in SDR. So if you wanted your contrast to behave like this, then you want to work in the HDR tools. So let's just put a little bit in there. So let's just see that before and after. So I just want to adjust these clouds a little bit. So I'm going to go to my zone to do that as opposed to adjusting the exposure. Let's just push our highlights up a little bit. And you can see that affecting as I move the zone. Let's adjust our fall off a little bit. So let's just check our temperature controls. Okay, maybe somewhere there. And that's looking good. So I hope that's helped explain the HDR tools and the DaVinci Wide Gamut. Look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.